Antimicrobial resistance may be a term you've heard a couple of times, either at the hospital or at the pharmacy. An increase in antimicrobial resistance has been a call for concern, in which the World Health Organization has declared antimicrobial resistance as one of the top 10 global public health threats against humanity. Hello guys and welcome to Microbiology Insider. If you are new to this channel, I do videos about diseases caused by microorganisms and microbiology lectures in general. What are antimicrobials? Antimicrobials, which include antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics, are medicines used to prevent and treat infections in humans, animals, and plants. Antimicrobial resistance occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites change over time and no longer respond to medicine, making infections harder to treat and increasing the risk of disease spread, severe illness, and death. Before we ride on, I would like to give a brief history about the first antimicrobial drug to be discovered. The first antibiotic to be discovered was the antibiotic penicillin, which was discovered by the Scottish scientist Alexandra Fleming, where he observed that cultured petri dishes containing Staphylococcus aureus had been contaminated with a mold, whereby the areas of contamination by this mold had no growth of Staphylococcus aureus. Fleming concluded that the mold must be producing an antibacterial agent which not only inhibited the growth of the staphylococci, but more important, might be harnessed to combat infectious diseases. About 10 years later, the Australian pathologist Howard Fleury and the German-born biochemist Ernst Chain isolated the active substance of penicillin and carried out the first test on mice. Microbes can become resistant to drugs for both biological and social reasons. As soon as scientists introduce a new antimicrobial drug, there is a good chance that it will become ineffective at some point in time. This is due primarily to changes occurring within the microbes. These changes can come about in different ways. The first cause of antibiotic resistance we will be taking a look at is mutation. When microbes reproduce, Genetic mutations can occur. Sometimes, this will create a microbe with genes that help it survive in the face of antimicrobial agents. Secondly, we have selective pressure, whereby microbes that carry these resistant genes survive and replicate. The newly generated resistant microbes eventually become the dominant type. We also have gene transfer, whereby microbes can pick up genes from other microbes. Genes conferring drug resistance can easily transfer between microbes. That is, if a gene that is being resistant to a drug is picked up by another microbe, the microbe can also become resistant to that same drug. Lastly, we have phenotypic change. Microbes can change some of their characteristics to become resistant to common antimicrobial agents. The way in which people use antimicrobial drugs is a significant contribution to antimicrobial resistance. For example, in exact diagnosis, doctors sometimes prescribe antimicrobials just in case or they prescribe broad-spectrum antimicrobials when a specific drug would be more suitable. Using these medications in this way increases the risk of antimicrobial resistance. For example, the United States Food and Drug Administration points out that doctors often give antibiotics as a source of treatment for sore throat. However, only 15% of sore throat are due to streptococcal bacteria. In many cases, antibiotics cannot treat a sore throat. Therefore, this overprescription of antibiotics to sore throat patients 
increases the risk of antimicrobial resistance. Secondly, we have inappropriate use. If a person does not complete a course of antimicrobial drugs, some microbes may survive and develop resistance to the drug. Resistance can also develop if people use drugs for conditions that they cannot treat. For example, people sometimes take an antibiotic for a viral infection. Such inappropriate use of the antibiotic can cause microbes to become resistant to it. Another reason could be agricultural use. Using antibiotics in farm animals can promote drug resistance. Scientists have found drug resistant bacteria in meat and food crops that have exposure to fertilizers or contaminated water. In this way, diseases that affect animals can pass to humans. Lastly, we have hospital use. People who are critically ill often receive high doses of antimicrobials. This encourages the spread of antimicrobial resistant microbes, particularly in an environment where various diseases are present. I'm now going to talk about some of the various mechanisms which microbes use to become resistant to antimicrobials. Antimicrobial resistant mechanisms fall into four main categories. Limiting uptake of drug, modification of drug target, inactivation of drug, and efflux of drug. There is variation in the type of mechanisms used by gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Gram-negative bacteria make use of all four main categories. Whereas, gram-positive bacteria less commonly use limiting the uptake of a drug and don't have the capacity for certain types of drug efflux mechanisms. There is a natural difference in the ability of bacteria to limit the uptake of antimicrobial agents. The structure and function of the lipopolysaccharide layer in gram-negative bacteria provides a barrier to certain types of molecules. This gives those bacteria innate resistance to certain group of large antimicrobial agents. That is, gram-negative bacteria are resistant to certain group of antimicrobial agents by limiting the uptake of these antimicrobial agents due to the presence of the lipopolysaccharide layer in the gram-negative bacteria, which is not present in gram-positive bacteria. Also, microbacteria have an outer membrane that has a high lipid content. And so, hydrophobic drugs such as rifampicin and fluoroquinolones have an easier access to the cell, but hydrophilic drugs have limited access. Therefore, making these bacteria showing certain degree of resistance to hydrophilic drugs. In bacteria with large outer membranes, substances often enter the cell through porine channels. The purine channels in gram-negative bacteria generally allow access to hydrophilic molecules. There are two main ways in which purine changes can limit drug uptake. Firstly, a decrease in the number of purines present and also mutations that change the selectivity of the purine channel. There are multiple components in the bacterial cell that may be targets of antimicrobial agents, and there are just as many targets that may be modified by the bacteria to enable resistance to these drugs. One mechanism of resistance to the beta-lactam drugs used almost exclusively by gram-positive bacteria is via alterations in the structure and or numbers of penicillin-binding proteins. Penicillin binding proteins are transpeptidases involved in the construction of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. A change in the number, that is, either increase in penicillin binding proteins that have a decrease in drug binding ability, or decrease in penicillin binding proteins with normal drug binding impacts the amount of drug that can bind to that target. The glycopeptide, e.g. vancomycin, 
also work by inhibiting cell wall synthesis. Gram-negative bacteria have intrinsic resistance to these drugs. Resistance to vancomycin has become a major issue in Staphylococcus aureus. The resistance is mediated through acquisition of van genes, which results in changes in the structure of peptidoglycan precursors that cause a decrease in binding ability of vancomycin. Resistance to drugs that target the ribosomal subunits may occur via ribosomal mutation, e.g. as seen in aminoglycosides. Also, it may occur via ribosomal subunit methylation, as seen in microlytes, streptogramines, and also in aminoglycosides, most commonly involving M genes, or may occur via ribosomal protection, as seen in resistance to tetracyclines. These mechanisms interfere with the ability of the drug to bind to the ribosome. The level of drug interference varies greatly among these mechanisms. For drugs that target nucleic acid synthesis, such as fluoroquinolones, resistance is via modification in DNA gerase for gram-negative bacteria or topoisomerase 4 for gram-positive bacteria. These mutations can cause changes in the structure of gerase and topoisomerase, which decrease or eliminate the ability of the drug to bind to this component. For the drugs that inhibit metabolic pathways, resistance is via mutations in enzymes involved in the folate biosynthesis pathway and or overproduction of resistant dihydropterate synthase and dihydrofolate reductase enzymes. The sulfonamide and trimetoprim bind to their respective enzymes due to their being structural analogs of the natural substrates. The action of these drugs is through competitive inhibition by binding in the active site of the enzyme. That is, sulfonamide and trimetoprim are similar in structure to the natural substrate of the enzyme, sulfonamide P-aminobenzoic acid and trimetoprim dihydrofolate. Due to this, the sulfonamides are able to bind to the active sites of the enzymes, thereby inhibiting the natural substrates from binding to their active sites. There are two main ways in which bacteria inactivate drugs. Firstly, by actual degradation of the drug or by transfer of a chemical group to the drug. The beta lactamases are a very large group of drug hydrolyzing enzymes. Another drug that can be inactivated by hydrolyzation is tetracycline via the TETX gene. Drug inactivation by transfer of a chemical group to the drug most commonly uses transfer of acetyl, phosphoryl, and adenine groups. Acetylation is the most diversely used mechanism and is known to be used against the aminoglycosides, chloramphenicol, the streptogramines, and the fluoroquinolones. Phosphorylation and adenylation are known to be used primarily against the aminoglycosides. Bacteria possess chromosomally encoded genes for efflux pumps. Some are expressed constitutively and others are induced or overexpressed under certain environmental stimuli or when a suitable substrate is present. The efflux pumps function primarily to rid the bacterial cell of toxic substances, and many of these pumps will transport a large variety of compounds. The resistance capability of many of these pumps is influenced by what carbon source is available. Most bacteria possess many different types of efflux pumps. 
There are five main families of effluxforms in bacteria, classified based on structure and energy source. These families are the ATP binding cassette family, the multi-drug and toxic compound extrusion family, the small multi-drug resistant family, the major facilitator superfamily, and the resistance nodulation cell division family. Most of these efflux pumps family are single component pumps which transport substrates across the cytoplasmic membrane. We've come to the end of this lecture. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, turn on your notification, and do wait to follow us on all our social media platforms.